The talking, nagging, lucha watching, puro viewing, indie supporting, drinking, cursing, son of a gun of a podcast. Join former pro wrestler and promoter Dave Dynasty and co-host Ike Isaacs as they talk wrestling and interview those within the business. Bringing positivity back to pro wrestling. This is the Dave Dynasty Show. Dave Dynasty Show. I am your host, Dave Dynasty. I am here bunkered down deep within the Dynasty Den in the bowels of my home here in beautiful North Carolina. Hopefully you are all well out there. Hopefully you are all staying safe, quarantined. Uh, You're hopefully practicing social distancing when you do have to go into public. And hopefully you're only going into public when you absolutely have to. Because I would like to think that anybody that listens to my show is aware of the importance of the quarantine and, and the, the purpose of it. And it's not just simply a, so I don't get sick type thing. It is a, so others don't get sick so that you don't help spread things. And so that most of all, we don't overwhelm our healthcare system uh, who are just fighting to stay ahead of it anyway. Uh, they're, they're not ahead of it. That's for sure. But anyway, I digress enough of that. I'm glad you're all here. We have a very, very special episode today, one that I've been wanting to do for a long time, and I finally, I just dove in. As you know, recently here on the Dave Dynasty Show, we've we've broadened our horizons, right? We've opened up to talk about other wrestling that I enjoy besides just Midwest wrestling, and and anything that I deem to be good, real pro wrestling, I've decided I'm going to talk about on the show. And of course, it's still going to be very heavy on Midwest wrestling, and extraordinarily heavy on wrestling history, because that's what I enjoy, right? I enjoy the history of pro wrestling. And diving into things. And that's what we're going to do here today. Let's take a closer look today at one of my favorite factions in all of professional wrestling history, the Varsity Club. Now, I feel the Varsity Club is extremely underappreciated in the history of pro wrestling. I loved the Varsity Club when they were there because to me, they were they were believable to me, right? You knew these guys had this uh, collegiate background because they talked about it on, on television all this time, right? You always heard Mike Rotunda, you know, graduated and wrestled at, uh, you know, a two sport star at Syracuse University and all these things. And I just thought it was, it was great, right? And, and Rotunda was so convincing as that smarky jock heel guy. And I know a lot of people say, well, how does Kevin Sullivan tie into it? Well, the fact of the matter is, I, I liked it because Sullivan had that twisted approach to things, right? And you could believe that he could take this guy, Mike Rotunda, and twist him. And bring him over to the dark side. So that's what I always felt, right? That's why he was called, you know, the games master at that time. You know, I, I felt like he was he was playing a game of chess, and these were his pawns in it. Now we're going to dive deep into all the aspects of the group's history. It was not a long run by any means. Uh, it was not even quite three years, uh, just actually barely over two. Uh, but we're going to look at this, and we've got some very special stuff involved as we take a look at this today. Um, I have a Audio from many of the television shows where these angles and approaches uh, occurred. So it'll really give you the feel for what was going on, right? You'll hear it from the TV shows. And then to really add depth to it, who could we go to but the games master himself, the taskmaster, Kevin Sullivan. That's right. Kevin Sullivan is on the show. And what I've done is this. See, I have to send a special thank you to Sign Guy who conducted this interview with Kevin Sullivan for me for the show. Uh, Taskmaster knows Sullivan. He's got a relationship with him. So I reached out and asked him if he could do this, and he did, and I'm very, very grateful. Now, what I have done is I have taken Sign Guy's interview, and I have just cut out some of Kevin's parts to tie them into my narrative here today about the Varsity Club. So all you're going to hear is some of some of Sullivan's comments were applicable in my talk. Now, what you can do is if you go to my YouTube channel, and there will be a section that will say Other Wrestling on one of my playlists, Right there, I will have the complete interview uh, with Sign Guy and Kevin Sullivan. You can hear the entire thing, unedited, uncut, the question and answer uh, that that Sign Guy did for me with Kevin Sullivan. 
And I will put the link here in the notes too, so it's very easy to get there. So I highly advise you after this show is over to go there because there's a lot of information and a lot of things and a lot of stuff that Sign Guy found out that I didn't include in the show today. I only pulled what I needed for the narrative today. So make sure you go there and check that out after this. I highly, highly suggest it. So that's how we are. That's how we're doing it. We're going to dive right into the Varsity Club. We're going to talk about their history. We're going to start right at the beginning and all the way up through the reunion. That's right. There was a reunion. And we'll do that right after we take a break to get our plugs and sponsors in. So stick around. Hey, make sure you visit DaveDynasty.com. That is your central hub for everything within the world of the Dave Dynasty Show. From there, you can find links to follow us on all of our social media accounts. We are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, YouTube, which you will want to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have lots of classic wrestling, every episode of the podcast, and other exclusive features there. While you're at DaveDynasty.com, check out the links to help financially support the show. That is how we keep this free every week. You can go to ProWrestlingTees.com slash The Dave Dynasty and buy a shirt to help us out. PayPal.me slash The Dave Dynasty to make a one-time financial contribution. Patreon.com slash The Dave Dynasty to make ongoing monthly contributions. Or you can click our affiliate links for Amazon.com and HighSpots.com. No additional charge to you, but it helps us out. Thank you for your support and check out DaveDynasty.com. Complete your experience with the Dave Dynasty Show. Since 2001, drug companies dumped a billion opioid pills in West Virginia, causing over 3,000 overdose deaths and thousands of babies born addicted by no fault of their own. I'm attorney Stephen New. If you're the grandparent or guardian of a child born with neonatal abstinence syndrome, call me. I'll help you seek just compensation. Call the law offices of Stephen P. New at 1-844-BAD-PILLS before time runs out. All right, and we are back here on the Dave Dynasty Show. and Now let's dive in. Let's talk about the Varsity Club. So let's start with, let's start with Mike Rotunda. In mid-1987, uh, Mike Rotunda was kind of tolling around as a, you know, to be, to be frank, kind of a bland baby face, right? He clearly had skills in the ring, but his personality just wasn't there. If you watch some of his uh, early, even before 87, some of his early promos in the mid-Atlantic area, the Florida area, his promos were, were really not that great at all. And that is being polite. Um, so, you know, he was kind of tolling around, talented, but not really able to to rise to that next level. Uh, on June 7th, 1987, he beat Dory Funk Jr. in a rematch to win the Florida Championship. Um, you know, and this, you know, like I said, he was he was there in Florida. He was doing his thing. They brought him into Jim Crockett Promotions. And uh he was he was just really not clicking. He was he was working a lot of tag team matches with Ricky Santana on the mid card and things things just weren't working. Uh well then kind of in late 87 they started teasing the thing that perhaps he was going to turn heel. Uh, Kevin Sullivan came out during a match where Rotunda was teaming with Ricky Santana, and at some point during the match, Sullivan said something to Rotunda, and Rotunda just walked off in the match and left Santana. Uh, they didn't really build on that a whole lot more, per se. But then finally, in December, they really pulled the trigger on it, uh, and, and he turned heel. Uh, it was during a match uh, that Rotunda had against Nikita Koloff for the World Television Championship. Again, Sullivan came out to ringside. Uh, Rotunda kind of played up the, you know, hey, what are you doing? You know, blah, blah, blah. You know, not really paying a lot of attention to Sullivan. But then after the match, uh, Sullivan did a thing, you know, tried to interfere, tried to do something, tried to say something to Nikita. I, can, I don't remember the exact specifics. And it caused Rotunda to get pinned by Nikita. Now, one would think it, it was kind of leading you to believe that, oh, that's it. Rotunda's going to draw the line. Sullivan cost him the match. Sullivan cost him his opportunity to the TV title. So that's the way it's going to be. Uh, Sullivan immediately came into the ring, began attacking Nikita Koloff, and then he um, was joined by Rotunda. Rotunda laid in, showed this really vicious, aggressive side that he had never really showed, had really good facials during this segment. And and that was it, right? It was it was, heel, it was sealed. He, he, he turned heel. He joined Kevin Sullivan. Uh, there weren't a lot of details of why. Or what was that? What was happening at that time? But you know, after all these teasing, it occurred. So that formed this alliance, 
let's start here. We got first. I'm gonna, I'm gonna dive into some audio here to to emphasize my points here on on the formation of the varsity club. First thing we have is some audio from the NWA Pro Show that aired on December nineteenth, nineteen eighty seven. This is the audio at the end of that match with Akita Koloff that shows uh, Rotunda turning heel. Then we're going to follow that up with um, s- some audio from Kevin Sullivan from the interview with Sign Guy where he talks about whose idea it was for the Varsity Club and how it came to be. And then after that, we're going to have one more audio segment here. It is from NWA World Championship Wrestling on January 16th, 1998. 1988, excuse me, about a month later, when we really hear that they, they give it the name, the Varsity Club, and you see where the roots were really laid for this. So let's listen to all that audio. First of all, like we said, the audio of Rotunda turning heel in that match with Nikita Koloff. The audio then followed by audio from Kevin Sullivan explaining the formation and the ideal for the Varsity Club. And then finally, the audio of an interview from World Championship Wrestling in January 88, dropping the name, the Varsity Club. Mark Rotunda has just been pinned by Nikita Koloff. Into the ring now, Sullivan, Koloff, Rotunda, Rotunda over. He, he was talking to Kevin Sullivan from behind. Koloff got it now. Here's Sullivan attacking Koloff from behind. Kevin Sullivan attacking Nikita Koloff here. Trying to tie him up in the corner. Kevin Sullivan, the maniacal. As he goes out of the ring now with Koloff flat on the on the concrete floor. I don't like when they're right into our table at ringside. And down oh, goes the table here. Nikita Koloff again, Jim. I'll tell you something, Rotunda has, I don't know what kind of power the Sullivan has had to initiate over Rotunda. When he's done it, Rotunda, look on his face. He's a little wild man. Nikita Koloff staggering around again. Sullivan wanted to turn loose in Rotundo. He has done it in Ensign. Now Koloff trying to drag Sullivan back to the ring. Double teamed again, Jim. They're still double teaming him. Kevin Sullivan has finally gotten through to Mark Rotunda. And Rotunda has followed Sullivan's wishes with a blatant and a dastardly double teaming attack on the key to Koloff right here, Bob. As you see, Kevin Sullivan and Mike Rotunda leaving. Jim, I tell you, if possible. Let's go back. Let's watch some of this again. Here's the way it ended. In slow motion, fans, you see from behind, Nikita Koloff came up behind Rotunda, rolled him up. Got the count of three on him there, Jim. Well, that incensed uh, Mike Rotunda. And then uh, Sullivan came to the ring. But the thing about it is that Sullivan and Rotunda, after Sullivan opened up on the on, on Nikita, right there you see him having words. And now Kevin Sullivan interjects himself right here momentarily, very physically, with Nikita Koloff. Well, it looked for a moment like Sullivan and Rotunda were going to get into it. And then after they talked uh, talked it over, it was Sullivan who tore right in after Koloff. And this is where he really got to Rotunda. You could see the change, Jim, just taking place in Rotunda. You certainly could, Bob. I, uh, this, is, this is what they wanted all along. It was Dusty Rhodes' idea. It was a great idea. Three... Uh, Letter athletes in wrestling, and then you bring a guy that's completely on the opposite end of the spectrum. And it, you're saying to yourself, when you're looking at this, there's three clean cut guys standing there, and there's a guy with a black robe on. This doesn't make sense. So, in doing that time period, there was all kinds of scandals in colleges with the athletes about, you know, drinking, partying and different rules they had breaking, broken. So it worked out. Dusty had a brilliant, brilliant mind. I have one more thing, David. Tell him, tell him, tell him. Want to tell Michael? Tell him. 
I have one more thing. We have just signed a new member of the Varsity Club. None other than the All-American from the University of Michigan, Rick Steiner. Yeah, but I play two sports, though. That makes me the first and honorable member of the Varsity Michael, Club. Michael, you'll always be my favorite, Michael. Always be my favorite. The Varsity Club is going to wreak havoc. And Nikita, when you lay your weary head down, think what I said. I'd like to say one thing real quick. I think the people should start showing me a little respect. I'm a college graduate. I play two sports at Syracuse University. And they better stop booing me and start showing me a little respect. Because that's right. Let's go, Ward. Syracuse University. Let's go, Daddy. Yeah. I just would said they should show you a lot. Not a lot of respect. Not a little. All right. So then one prominent aspect of early varsity club life is that they, they always teased this little rivalry competitiveness between Rotunda and Steiner. They were always back behind Sullivan and promos, kind of uh, horsing around. Uh, they were just completely acting like high school goofs, right? And, you know, Rotunda kind of played up the, the, the smarky, the, the, the quarterback, really suave jock guy, and Rotunda was more the, the, the meathead type jock. And uh, they really played it up back here, and a lot of times Sullivan had to split them up and settle them down, and go kind of this almost fatherly, or actually in this case, coach-type figure. So it was always there. Even straight from the beginning, they played it up, even with Sullivan dropping hints of, of his, his bias, how he thought you know Syracuse was a better school than, than Michigan and everything else. To China build this little bit of rivalry, it appeared in there. Now, one thing that happened is eventually um, – on January 26, 1988, Mike Rotunda did beat Nikita Kolov to win the television title. And then on a clip that aired on NWA World Championship Wrestling that following Saturday on January 30th, 1988, Mike Rotunda gives his Florida title to Rick Steiner. So let's listen to that audio real quick of, of Rotunda uh, bestowing the Florida title on Rick Steiner. Let me tell you what, the party's over. The good times are over for good, gentlemen. I came on here two short weeks ago and said that Mike Rotunda would secure the second most prestigious belt. You can yell from all you want, because he ain't going to be back. You see the most second most prestigious belt in the NWA, the World TV Championship. You see, now... This is the most dominant force in professional wrestling. And let me repeat this. This, no matter who or what anybody, and I mean anybody says, this is the dominating force in professional wrestling. And two short weeks, Mike Rotundo did my bidding for me. He went and took the belt from one half of the superpowers, Nikita Koloff, just as I predicted. You see... When the Varsity Club is together, gentlemen, you can talk about winning, and you can talk, and even my illustrious colleagues talk about gut feelings. Well, when they face anybody, the gut feeling is whether they win or lose. But now when you face the Varsity Club, what it is is not winning and losing, it's your very survival. And I'm talking about not coming out of the ring with just a broken boat or maybe something lodged in your throat. What I'm talking about is maybe not grabbing the last breath of life and maybe not living the way no. you could have had extra, okay? So much breath, yeah. So, first of all, I don't like to have my favorite, Mike Rotunda. Why are you favorite? Because I said so. It's real simple. I won't give you everything you want. I'll give you everything you need. And today, Michael, my favorite, has decided to make you the Florida heavyweight champion. <laughs> We're wow. giving you the belt, Steiner, because in the varsity club, we know how to share. Wow, this like is it. great. You better Nobody's not ever lose giving it, me anything. You better not lose it, Steiner. I won't. Nobody's going to beat me with this thing out. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> Look at that. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> you see... The destruction of, first of all, Nikita Koloff, as all these people were chanting, Nikita, Nikita, they didn't think it could happen. Now, gentlemen, and I'm talking to Dusty Rhodes, I'm talking to Barry Windham, and I'm talking to Sting, all of them. Nikita went down real easy. 
when you lay your weary head down tonight after watching that tape and watching Nikita choke, when you hear the winds blow and you hear Varsity Club and you break out in a cold sweat and you look over to the lady that happens to be living with you or carrying your name, you better lean over and kiss her real quick because it may be the kiss that ends it all. Varsity Club, baby. Now, the Varsity Club goes through pretty much the entirety of 1988, uh, or at least the, the first uh, you know, two-thirds, uh, just kind of doing their thing, right? They, they Rotunda was the television champion. Steiner was a Florida champion. And um, they, they constantly had this, this rivalry with Rotunda and Steiner, like I mentioned. And it was the fans were catching on, right? There was just all kinds of needling between the two and and Steiner was really starting to get over with the fans. It was clear where this was going. It was clear where it was heading. It was clear that Rick Steiner was on on a journey to, to being a big time babyface in Jim Crockett promotions. And they were letting it slow cook and it was so amazing to watch. Um because they would be during matches, I mean you would have Sullivan teaming with Steiner or Rotunda teaming with Steiner in matches. And, I mean, Steiner was getting chants, his name chanted, and all these cheers while his partner was getting booed. It was great at where it was going. And and it was clearly being played up by Rotunda and Sullivan, who were getting irritated by it. And they were just, the needling was getting worse. They were talking harsher about Rick Steiner. They were talking harsher about Michigan University. And and you started to see Rick Steiner get a little more, a little more, um, oh, what do I want to say, a little, a little braver, right? A little a little more courage to kind of say some things and stand up and, and, and the announcers and the crowd was doing it. And Steiner was clearly getting over and it was there to have fun, interact with the fans. And it was just a beautiful, beautiful thing as it was building and you, and you knew where it was heading. And, but before that happens, the next big kind of moment in the varsity club history is they added a fourth member. They added Dr. Destiny Williams. Now a lot of people really, and, and, and there was a part where I kind of thought that Dr. Death came in, after Steiner left the varsity club. And that's actually not true. There was overlap. And Dr. Death coming in was kind of the, the one of the final nails in the coffin for Steiner turning. Um, so Dr. Death comes in and joins the varsity club, right? And it's clear that, um, that, that Williams fits, right? Dr. Death, Steve Williams fits right into the group. He has the collegiate background. He, he's a badass guy. He fits into the group. Perfect. Right. And where Rick Steiner was kind of this muscle uh, enforcer type of the group, it was clear that Dr. Death now would probably be fitting into that role for for the, the group. Uh, you know, you had your, your suave jock and Mike Rotunda, and he had his, his henchman, or so be his muscle, and Dr. Death. Now, if you listen to the full interview with Sign Guy, you did see that there was thoughts of Dr. Death being in the varsity club from the very beginning, but he had commitments in Japan and commitments in other places, uh, or not, you know, they starting to make appearances in Japan, and, and this and that's that's what Sullivan says. And there was this talk to get him in there, and things just didn't work out, right? I mean, Doctor Death was still in uh, the UWF and working for Bill Watts, and it was, you know, was probably making starting to make some shots in Japan and get some interest in other places, and this and that and whatever. But the, the it didn't work out. But there was the the, the talk of having Doctor Death in from the beginning, right? It was a natural fit, and, and running the group as a quartet from the beginning. Um, but once Jim Crockett approached his butt off the UWF, things were really, really, the, the seeds were planted. It was going to move in that direction. and uh, But it just didn't work out from the beginning. Um, now, you will hear some audio here. Uh, first of all, we have the audio from the NWA World Championship Wrestling from uh, October 22nd, 1988. Uh, like I said, this was later in the year. And this is where Kevin Sullivan uh, says that he had him and Rotunda have been talking, and they've decided on a new member to enter the varsity club. And you'll hear Rick Steiner chime in that he has some ideals and thoughts uh, of a new member. And you'll hear who a name that he drops, and you'll see where, the, like again, where that face turn is coming for him. And we follow that that up by uh, Kevin Sullivan, and uh, where he talks about Doctor Steve Williams and how he thinks he was kind of a better athlete than Rick Steiner, and why he thought that, as far as in the reference of the varsity club, why he thought it was an even better fit. Uh, so let's go to that audio first. First from October 22nd, 1988, an interview with the Varsity Club, talking about the new member coming, and then an interview 
the interview highlights uh, from the Sign Guy interview with Kevin Sullivan talking about Dr. Death and the Varsity Club. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the Varsity Club with Kevin Sullivan. Hey, I like that cheering yeah, center. I like thinks it. thinks a lot of things are cute. Well, let me tell you what. A lot of heavy things have gone down. It ain't just so funny for Sting. It ain't so funny for Lex Luger. And it could be real dangerous for some other people. Let me even wait. A big announcement. Mike Rotunda and myself have decided on a new member of the Varsity Club. Surprise! Surprise! I got some good ideas, why do you ask me? Come on, Steiner, we're not asking you nothing. We're going to drop a bombshell. Great ideas. What? I got some good ideas, how come you didn't fight me? You have no brain. Hey. You're a moron. Face it. Stop it. Listen, we have to set... Something's going to hurt you. We have decided that we have taken a new member. It's the biggest bombshell of the wrestling world this year. And a lot of things have happened. And the other thing is, right now, we're claiming the six-man world tag team championships. You see... If Dusty Rhodes has always been involved in problems. Well, Dusty Rhodes, you weren't there. So we're taking it upon ourselves. We had the Road Warriors beat. We are the world's... Hey, hey, what? What? We should get Sting. Hey. What? We should get Sting by our partner because he had you beat. And you what do you mean? Me. What do you mean? What do you mean? What? I... Come here. Come here. What? Come here. What? First of all, first of all, listen to me. First of all, listen to me. Listen. First of all, I want the people to know the Varsity Club. Everything's right. And you're wrong. Everything's what? You're stupid. Can you hear? Can you hear? Hey, you got to clean your Hey, you got some extra money. I, I got to send Sting some flowers. You what? I got to send Sting some I flowers. You, I want you to leave right now. Just leave. Go. Just go. Get out of here, leave. 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 Go. Go get some popcorn. Go get some popcorn. He's not a nice guy, David. He's a trained, fantastic wrestler. But sometimes he gets off the track. He's all for it. He's all for it. It worked well for him. We did have a backstory, but we didn't need to use it because Steiner left and we had to fill the spot. So we, I made a thing, I think, on an interview with Mike did that we got a much better amateur wrestler than Doc truthfully was. And, uh, you know, that's, we got the answer to stop Steiner. So uh, if we had gone further, maybe need the backstory, we probably would have used it, but we didn't need it. I'm going with Dr. Death was a better amateur athlete with his record, you know, and, and I'm not just putting Michigan down, but it's not Oklahoma, you know what I mean? And Dr. Death, I believe, was two or three-time national champion. Well, Rick was national champion once or twice, but Doc was... Uh, they were both equal to the past, but Dr. Death was a little bit more experienced. And he had played other sports, pro, you know, football and pro football. All right. Now, as we talked, it was clear there was a build that Rick Steiner was going to be leaving the varsity club, and he was going to be turning babyface. He, he actually was a babyface, right? The crowd was chanting his name. The crowd was so behind him. And when Dr. Death Steve Williams came into the varsity club, it appeared the time was right. The final nail was in the coffin, and here, here it came. Now, it, it, it's just great because, like I said, as it progressed, Steiner just got more more courage and, and, and braver as it went along, and he was firing back to Rotunda and Sullivan, and he was particularly Rotunda, and he was saying these things. You know, He was talking about how Rotunda almost lost the TV title thing, and, it, and Steiner just kept teasing him, how I sting almost beat you, you know, just carrying on and saying all these things. And it was, it was just really, really well done. And it was one of those things that you don't see a lot now because they don't have the patience to let it build and brew as long as they did then. Um, but it eventually did occur. And uh, but, but before we get to the actual turn and the actual split from of Steiner from the Varsity Club, let's uh, look at let's do an audio clip from NWA World Championship Wrestling from November twelfth, nineteen eighty eight. Again, this was just shortly after Doctor Death joined the group. 
and this is this is audio of where Rick Steiner really kind of snaps, and, and it just appears he's at that breaking point, and he really fires back on Sullivan and Rotunda during a promo. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Kevin oh, Sullivan, the Varsity oh, Club. Yes, Kevin. I want to talk about the new Varsity Club. The new Varsity Club, we have put everything together. I have the world TV champion right here, and we're on our way to the new U.S. Tag Team Championship belt. You see, we have made a plan, Michael and myself. Sure, Michael. You have that? Sure. I love it. Thank you, Mike. Wait a minute. Real do that. Real simple. Oh, it's all dirty, hey, 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 I'm sick and tired of this. What are you sick and tired of? I was supposed to wrestle Flair today. You and you, I could have beat him today. You could beat the world champion. Yeah, I could beat him. You could beat Dr. Death. I could beat you. And I know I could beat you. You can't beat me. Yeah, you can't beat me. 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 You can Let's see him back in the room. Okay, so they've had the slow build to Steiner turning. And now it was at that point, right? Steiner snapped and it appears he stepped over the line, right? You know, Sullivan and Rotunda cannot handle this. And, you know, Rick Steiner thought all along these were his friends, these were his partners, these were his teammates. And it's clear it's not. Rick Steiner's, in his own way, is fed up and drawing the line. And clearly Rotunda and Sullivan have drawing the line. And now they have Steve Dr. Death Williams in the fold. Well, you know, Rick Steiner is, he's just, you know, he no longer needed in the group. So it happens, right, during the end of a match uh, where Rotunda, or excuse me, yeah, Rotunda's leg is tripped by Rick Steiner uh, against the Fantastics, causing a pinfall uh, and the loss for the Varsity Club. The Varsity Club snaps, they attack Rick Steiner, they beat him down, effectively kicking him out of the group, and in what is very ceremoniously, they, they rip his singlet off, right? They they rip the Michigan colors from him as kind of a mark of he's no longer in the group. And he's no longer associated. And it's beautifully done if you watch the video of this. Because the Fantastics don't really interfere. They kind of stand back like, hey, what's going on here? I don't know, you know. And, and they don't really step up to help Rick Steiner. They don't help up, step up a lot afterwards. Because, again, they're very rare. This is a guy that has... We've wrestled. This is a guy that was on the other side of the fence, and they don't, you know, it's very, to me, very important that you, they don't just, oh, blindly trust these guys all of a sudden because there's a lot of history there. So it's very beautifully done. But uh, let's go now to the audio. This is from NWA Worldwide on November 26, 1988, and this is Steiner getting kicked out of the Varsity Club. And we will follow that up with audio from Kevin Sullivan talking about how Steiner being kicked out of the group was very very fan driven. The fans are yelling, Steiner! 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 Hey, God! Oh, you see what he did? You see what he did? He hooked his leg! Pull him down! Pull him down! Oh, no, he got him! He got him! Whoa! The fans are getting him! Oh, no! 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 Oh,
Classic, he'll advance to the tournament. That's one of the stories. The big story right now, though, is this man in the center of the ring. His jersey, his Marcy Club jersey, ripped to shreds, and he's back up on his feet. that something like this would happen. But I didn't think, when all three of them got him down, I don't think they thought he would get back up so soon. You can't keep this man down for long. They're going to be hearing a lot about Rick Steiner. You know, all of us have some, some Steiner, and you, we always sit there. You know, you take it, you take it, and then you fight back. And that's, that's why they love The people actually made us switch Steiner because we go into towns and they were booing me in Rotunda, but they were cheering for Rick and I was still wrestling, and sometimes it'd be me and Steiner and Mike on the floor, and sometimes it'd be me and Mike with Rick on the floor. And during that period, you know, Rick would screw up in the ring, and uh, if he was on the floor, he'd make fun of me and Mike. So the people, you know, and he had Alex, you know, that he talked to, and uh, the, so I went to Dusty and I said, We can't keep going like this because. We swimming against the stream. I said we needed to turn them, and we turned them, and we drew big money with Rick Steiner as a babyface. And I don't think he's ever got the credit he deserves as a babyface. So Rick Steiner's out of the varsity club. He is a full-fledged babyface, and man, he is such a sympathetic babyface. He was so over at this time. It was a beautiful, beautiful thing. Uh, shortly after, December 26, 1988, uh, I believe this was at Starcade. Rick Steiner defeated Mike Rotunda to win the television title. Uh, the title was regained by Rotunda on January 20th, 1989, uh, shortly thereafter. But, of course, the build at this stage of the game was on to bring in Rick's younger brother, Scott Steiner, as a tag team. They did the whole angle with Robin Givens slash Woman and, and building to that. And, of course, we know how you know great the tag team the Steiners were. And there was a brief feud there with the Varsity Club. Uh, it, it, well, actually, in the interim, there was a, a brief feud uh, with Rick Steiner and it, teaming with Eddie Gilbert, uh, you know, against the Varsity Club and things. But we know where that goes. But after Steiner is out, um, they bring in Danny Spivey later uh, to join the group. And, and then shortly after, Dr. Death kind of fades out of the scene and, and from the group. Um, and Spivey... Spivey didn't fit into the group as well, right? I think they were – I understand. I think he did play some college football and everything, but I think they, it was really a stretch. Spivey didn't seem like the kind of the group. It it, it wasn't a horrible fit, uh, but it wasn't. And it, you can see throughout this entire process of the varsity club, there was always, as you look back on it now, this thought of, well, why was like someone like Ron Simmons not put in the group? And if you listen to our full interview with Kevin Sullivan, he discusses that of why they didn't put Ron Simmons in the group. Uh, and if you do actually go back and watch NWA uh, around this time, Ron Simmons addresses it and some promos on air. He, you know, there was some mentions by Kevin Sullivan and, and there's a promo out there where Ron Simmons basically says, Hey, Kevin Sullivan, get my name out of your mouth. I'm not joining your group. I'm not joining the varsity club. It's not going to happen just to, to put that to rest. Uh, and it was actually during the time though, Ron Simmons and Steve Williams were kind of teaming a lot. And I think they were teasing Simmons joining the group. And that's when they ended up going with Dr. Death. So I think it was an attempt to pull some sleight of hand. <laughs> but uh, but if you listen, again, if you listen to the full interview with Kevin Sullivan, that sign guy did, you do hear that there were there was discussions. It was brought up to put Ron Simmons in the group, and you will hear Sullivan's reason why, because Sullivan really had higher aspirations for Ron Simmons. He was the booker at the time, or helping book, uh, and, and he really was pushing uh, Dusty Rhodes and, and some of those guys to do some big things. Uh, actually, oh, I, let me take that back. It would not be Dusty Rhodes. This would have been during the period where Dusty Rhodes had left uh, the NWA and WCW. So anyway, he had higher aspirations for Ron Simmons that were not fulfilled at that time. They would later be. And that's why he was not put into the varsity club or why it was not seriously discussed. Uh, but anyway, so they go with Dan Spivey into the group. Uh, Sullivan kind of feels that uh, that Spivey wasn't great. He, he thought Dan Spivey would have been better on his own. Of course, Spivey would later be in the skyscrapers with Sid Vicious after this and whatever else. 
but uh, and like we said, around not around this time, shortly after Doctor Death kind of fades off, he becomes a big star in Japan, teaming with Terry Gordy. Uh, you know, Rick goes on and was doing his thing with his brother Scott. But let's go to some audio now, and here is uh, we will have uh, first some audio talking about Spivey joining this from NWA World Championship Wrestling on February eighteenth, nineteen eighty nine. This was the very tail end of the Varsity Club run, and it talks about. Uh, Dan Spivey joining. Now there was mentioned there was, on one of their morning syndicated shows. Apparently, there was a promo with Sullivan announcing Spivey, but I, I don't have that audio. So this is the afternoon, the night show that night, but where he talks about uh, Spivey joining, and then we will follow that up with some audio from Kevin Sullivan talking about why he feels Dan Spivey would be have been better on his own. We're going to see Danny Spivey, the newest member of the Varsity Club in action. If you were with us here this morning, you heard his introduction from his mentor, Kevin Sullivan. One of the greatest athletes ever from the University of Georgia. But what I want to get to, you know, Jim Russ, I've been having a reoccurring dream. Let me tell you about my dream. See, when I lay my weary head down at night on the pillow, I wake up in a real cold sweat. And goosebumps are all over me because it's the same dream. You see, it's Chicago. The building's packed. People are screaming. And there's Hawk, who's afraid of nothing, and Animal, who's beaten up everybody in his life. But I hear this horrible bone screaming slap. And I look down, and there's Hawk's arm broken, and I'm holding it. And there's Dr. Death, he has animal's arm, and he's using it as a toothpick. You see, Road Warriors, you can't bully us around. You can't bully people that can't be bullied. Because fear isn't in our hearts. You see, the only thing in our hearts, Road Warriors, is evil. You talk about you're the evil ones? Well, in Chicago, finally, you're going to meet the masters, the boys that invented the word evil. Hawk, Animal, I'll be glad to see you in the Chicago. Tell them, big man. Hey, Road Warriors, sound like you guys got some problems, dudes. Hey, you guys have got a whole lot of trouble coming your way. And when Kevin and the good doctor gets on you and plays a little howdy duty on your coconut, Oh, you guys, I see nothing but hard times coming your way. Well, Jim Ross, look at everybody in the varsity club. We're smiling. We're laughing. Because you know why? We are confident. We're very confident. We know what it takes to beat the road warriors. We know to get right to the bottom of the line. We know when we get you upset, when we get you so bad, you lose all cold concentration. As simple as that, you'll go down for one, two, three. When you talk about confidence, you talk about the right thing in the varsity club because Steiner, the belt is mine and I'm gonna get it back real soon. All right, fans, uh, Danny Spivey will be uh, making his way to the ring in a moment. Take on Big Tony Super. Let's go up to the ring now. The newest member of the varsity club, former outstanding collegiate football player, Magnum. He also played in the National Football League, we were told. Dusty had started, and I have the utmost respect for, uh, and he thought it would be a good fit. I started that time. I would have liked to see Dan on his own. Because now you're replacing guys and you're getting lost in the shuffle. I go back to the NWO. The NWO never should have been, in my estimation, more than Hogan, Nash, Hall, and Kidd. Once they started loading it up, it watered it down and took away the uniqueness of it and the legitimacy of it. And I think we made that mistake earlier, but it wasn't. The Varsity Club in no way on the level of drawing money, even though the Boston Club drew a lot of money. I mean, they're still trying to catch the NWO lightning in a bottle but almost 30 years later, right? He was a college athlete, you know, he played at Kentucky. He was a co- uh, I, I, I believe he was an All-American in Kentucky, but, you know, we all know about Danny's left hand. You know, he knocked a lot of people out, and Danny was tough as nails, so 
he complimented the group, but it wasn't Danny's fault. He came in, and I think Danny would have been better by himself. All right, so Dan Spivey joins you. I did fail to mention that in December 26, 1988, uh, Dr. Death, Steve Williams, and Kevin Sullivan win the United States Tag Team titles at a tournament fight against the Fantastics. They only hold them for a short while, and then they lose them to the, back to the Fantastics, I believe. And like I said, Spivey joins the group. Uh, then on uh, April 2nd, 1989, uh, Mike Rotunda, Steve Williams with the World Tag Team titles from the Road Warriors. Uh, this is where they're turning Teddy Long heel. He was the referee. He did a fast count on the Warriors. Uh, later, Rotunda and Williams, I believe, are just stripped of the titles because of the interference of Teddy Long. Teddy Long loses his managing license. And uh, then it was shortly after this, after losing the tag titles, after not, failing to regain them, Williams kind of fades off, goes to Japan, does his thing. Uh, this is, like I said, around late April, uh, early May. Uh, Teddy Long does turn heel as a manager. He ends up forming the Skyscraper, so Dan Spivey kind of leaves the Varsity Club, joins up with Sid Vicious, managed by Teddy Long and the Varsity Club. And that kind of leaves just the, the remnants of the Varsity Club of Mike Rotunda and Kevin Sullivan. It's where it all began, right? It, we're back to that duo. They start referring to Mike Rotunda as Captain Mike Rotunda, as the captain of the Varsity Club, and eventually... He does a full-fledged face turn, and Captain Mike Rotunda, who was captain of the team of the Varsity Club, becomes Captain Mike Rotunda, a captain of a ship. It was very weird. It was a nautical thing. I did not like it. He was doing a weird thing with uh, Norman the Lunatic, and I don't even know what else. It was not good. It was an, I feel for Mike Rotunda in this time. Of course, Kevin Sullivan went on to manage a whole bunch of misfits, the Barbarian and Cactus Jack, and doing lots of things. Ultimately, with the faces of fear and more diving into that dark side of Kevin Sullivan that he's always had. So there it is. The Varsity Club was was dead and gone, or was it? And what was uh, pretty wild, weird, and remarkable in 1989? We're talking ten years later. The Varsity Club resurfaced. That's right. Uh, Hacksaw Jim Duggan was in a feud with the Revolution, uh, which I believe was Dean Malenko, Perry Saturn. Uh, Shane Douglas, I'm not sure who else was around, but they, with these three. And leading up to Starcade 89, uh, this was on December 19th, 1999, and Duggan was going to have two mystery partners to wrestle that trio. And he came out and he introduced his mystery partners, and they were the Varsity Club. Mike Rotunda and Rick Steiner, accompanied by Kevin Sullivan. So over 10 years later, here they are back together, and uh, they are wrestling with Hacksaw Jim Duggan against... The revolution. So let's go now. We have some audio. This is Hacksaw Jim Duggan announcing his mystery partners from Starcade eighty or not Starcade ninety nine. Excuse me. And, and then we have a clip from Kevin Sullivan. Kevin Sullivan, you were talking about how this idea was pitched to Vince Russo, and they decided to run with it, and how it really did not get a fair chance. Okay, folks. Hey, folks. It's my great pleasure. To get introduced to you, folks. Do I have a mic and all tonight? the millions yeah. of folks well, watching on television. My tag team partners, the Varsity Club. What? Mike Rotunda. Wow! He's got to be. You have got to be kidding me. That's why that was my line. I thought I was going to say that. You got to be kidding me. I am Rotunda. Say, did you see this one coming? Did you see the one? I see it coming. Hell no. Who's the girl? That's not Mike Rotunda. That was fine. That's a hell of a addition.
revolution start off with a great defining battle that rightfully states what is ours and we take it. Tonight, Hacksaw has put the Varsity Club in a real bad position. That was a, an idea that came up with... Uh, somebody had brought the idea up and Russo decided to go with it. And Duggan was involved in that match. I didn't think I didn't think it was appropriate to do it, but you know, I, 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 sometimes you can't go back and live in the past. And Steiner, Steiner Rotunda had gone different ways, and bring it back. And if we only were one match. If we had stayed longer, it would have been better. All right. The reunion was short-lived. Didn't really go anywhere, as you heard Sullivan talk about. And that's it. Uh, Sullivan, or excuse me, Rotunda and Williams uh, did team a little bit in Japan. I believe they called themselves Varsity Club 2000. It didn't last long because Mike Rotunda had to hang it up due to injuries suffered over the course of his career, and he was done. And uh, But that was it. That's the entire run of the Varsity Club in a nutshell. I implore you to go out on the WWE Network or on YouTube or wherever, dive deep, watch some of the stuff. It was great, great stuff. A little over a two-year run. And again, I think it's a very underappreciated group in the professional wrestling history. I always enjoyed and loved the Varsity Club. Um, I really wish someone would have done more with it. I was hoping that at some point Kurt Angle kind of would have done a thing maybe uh, similar. Um, but I always wish someone would bring back something similar to the Varsity Club and really give it a, a run. I, I think the Varsity Club had a lot more potential than they did. Uh, but it is what it is. Um, I very much enjoyed them. So we're going to take a break. Before we do that, we do have one final clip here from the show from Kevin Sullivan. Uh, talking about what he feels kind of the lasting legacy of the Varsity Club is. So we're going to have that audio. We're going to take a break, and then we'll come back. And I will close out the show. This is only for a short time. You know, it had a brief run. As brilliant as it was, was it uh, could have been when we turned Steiner babyface with Dr. Death coming in, it could have been as hot as going against Rick and have Rick get special partners all over. I think we just, uh, we were a brilliant comet in the sky that burnt out too quickly. Steiner went on to bigger and greater things. Dr. Death had a magnificent career in uh, Japan. Uh, Mike had a great career in uh, WWE. So I, I think that sometimes people don't realize where the Genesis started from. I think the legacy of the group was Maybe, maybe I'm out of line here, but a precursor to Brock Lesnar, where uh, a guy that was a legit guy got to be put in the forefront. Anyway, that's what I think. Are you looking for the newest and hottest in the world of pro wrestling? Then check out the amazing action on Powerslam.tv, the biggest indie pro wrestling channel in the world. Get over 6,000 hours of the best events from over 150 of your favorite promotions from 20 different countries around the globe. Brands like Progress Wrestling, Evolve Wrestling, Combat Zone, Defy, PCW Ultra, PWX, Over the Top, Shine, and hundreds of others with fresh content added every day for only $5.99 per month. Get your free trial today at powerslam.tv. Just use promo code DYNASTY. If you are looking for the best books, DVDs, and posters on classic wrestling nostalgia, then you want to visit crowbarpress.com. There are literally dozens of titles there, including biographies of the likes of Bruiser Brody, Ole Anderson, Ivan Koloff, and of course, Dick the Bruiser, as we've spoke about here on the Dave Dynasty Show. You want to visit crowbarpress.com for all of your classic wrestling nostalgia needs. Again, that is crowbarpress.com. All right, we're back on the Dave Dynasty Show. Thank you for listening to us today. Thank you for uh, checking out this deep dive we did on the Varsity Club. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you will go out on social media and follow us on all the, the, the various platforms we are on. And I hope that you will comment, share, message me, whatever, and let me know what, what topics 
what personalities, what stables, what whatever do you want me to do these deep dives on in the future? A very special thank you to Sign Guy for conducting that interview with Kevin Sullivan. And a very special thank you to the Taskmaster himself for agreeing to do that interview for the Dave Dynasty Show. And again, go to YouTube. Uh, I will have a link in the comments of this, and you will be able to hear the complete uh, interview, the question and answer with Sign Guy and Kevin Sullivan. I implore you to check that out because there are some really good stuff on there that I did not include in this episode uh, that you will want to hear. It's a great supplement to this episode. Uh, so that's it. We talked about the Varsity Club, one of my favorite groups of all time. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for listening. And until next time, hey, hit us up. Let us know what you want us to talk about next. Uh, and Or maybe who you want me to try to interview next. Whatever it may be, let me know. But until next time, be good, be safe, keep on growing, and of course, stay at home.